Hi friends, welcome to Wild Cottage. My name is Susan, this is Shep. He's a retired sheepdog. He's only eight, but he's had different health challenges and he's having one at the minute, um, which I will talk about, which is why he's got the puffy collar on. And I'll talk about that towards the end of the podcast in the life sex segment in case you're interested. But yeah, so this is my knitting podcast, knitting and crafting. It's all knitting this time. But I knit, I do some spinning, some natural dyeing, learning crochet a bit. I hope to start sewing in, in a while. But anyway, today it's, it's knitting. So I hope you can hear the birds singing. We are here with the backdrop of part of our natural dyes garden that uh, we made this year. So basically all the plants you see here can be used in natural dyeing and there's more. It's more extensive than this but this is one really large section and we built that this year very much thanks to the Hen Harrier Project in Ireland who gave us a grant to build this and it encourages biodiversity because we've done it in a totally organic, partially biodynamic totally no dig pollinator friendly wildlife friendly manner so and it contains you know plants that are ornamental plants that are food plants and there's some fruit plants that are around as well that also can be used for natural dyeing and prunings and things like that anyhow but that's where we're sat at the minute and there are some midges out today and they that's because it's not very sunny and it's fairly cool. So I probably didn't, I think I forgot to say that. So my name is Susan. I live here at Wild Cottage in the west of Ireland, up in the hills, County Clare, uh, with my partner Tom and our two dogs, Shep and Mimi, who we found as a puppy up in the forestry about four years ago. Now I've sprayed midge repellent on myself, but it doesn't seem to be working quite as much as I'd like it to. I react badly to them. That's why I'm kind of like, oh. <laughs> Hi friends, I'm just popping this in here now to tell you that um, timestamps will be in the drop down menu, the description box, and also uh, any links to things I talk about. If I forget any links, just do let me know in the comments or if you have any questions and I will try to put them in and I will try to answer them. I wanted to put this in verbally because I know not everyone is necessarily looking at the screen if I was just to add it in as text. <laughs> so, all righty. We'll see you next time, won't we? We'll see them again soon. Okay, enjoy the podcast. Hi friends, welcome back to Wild Cottage. There were a few midges and when they bite me, I get like super inflamed, so. Yeah, so we've come in and I'm really sorry <laughs> because it's so much nicer out there. Um, Wild Cottage is in the west of Ireland in County Clare. We're up in the hills and we have a small holding for nature. So we don't have any livestock or anything like that at the minute, although cows come and graze around us twice a year just for a few weeks, hill cattle like. Uh, and they've just gone back to their, their good pasture. and. But we're just full of wildlife so you know there's the foxes there's the pine mart <laughs> yeah so there's you know the hen harriers i probably mentioned a bit about the hen harrier ireland yeah, and we do gardening we grow all our pretty much all our own vegetables um we have some of our fruit we're going to uh, expand the orchard with um irish native apple trees that's the plan for this autumn yeah so anyways that's just a little bit about us here at Wild Cottage. You're very, very welcome to new viewers and to returning viewers. Thank you for coming back. If you like, I always say to everybody, if you enjoy the video, subscribe, you know, so you can keep up with it. And if you like and comment, it helps YouTube know that people enjoy it. So other people will be suggested the channel as well, which would be lovely and appreciated if you like it and you want to spread it to others. So thank you very much. This right, so our, this is sort of our study and guitar room and, you know, extra bedroom in the cottage. Hi, darling. I know. He can't snuggle quite as much. Turn this a little bit. Maybe you can see him. 
There he is. <laughs> there he is there. Oh, he gave us quite a fright though. So anyhow, yeah. So I'm in, I'm in here for the time being. Yes. Yeah, so what am I wearing? So, okay. So first off, I will say it has been easily six weeks since I last had a podcast. I have done quite a bit of knitting. Um, and some of the items are what I have on now. So the shawl, this shawl, I absolutely love. And normally I'm, I'm not drawn to real lacy shawls, but the minute I saw this pattern, which is the Sherbet Fizz shawl by Amber O'Brien, I was like, oh my goodness, that's so, so lovely. And so here it is. So it's a yeah. little blown out. The, the pink, this bright pink is a little bit darker than what it looks. But it is absolutely so beautiful. And I don't usually go for very lacy shawls. I do love shawls. But this one called my name straight away. And I think I really liked the way there's the, these texture kind of ribs or ridges, not ribs, in the lace. So yeah, so this is a paid for pattern by Amber O'Brien and I've knit it in alpaca and I've knit it in DK because if you watch my other podcasts, you've heard me say I'm, I'm really uh, kind of over the very thin yarns, like the fingering weight and also I enjoy DK or using fingering held double with something else or with, you know, mohair. So this is an alpaca DK. Okay. I paused to get my tag so I can show you. So the alpaca is super fine alpaca DK and that is the tag there and it's 100% alpaca and the shade is 533 and I got this up at uh, Crafty Stitch Knitwits and Crafty Stitchers which is a yarn shop that has mostly commercial yarns like it doesn't have hand dyed yarns um, in, in Galway in Galway City and I got that there and I also got this was more local and I told the story about finding this in when lockdown was very tight and everything was shut except news agents were allowed to be open and I went into one of our village news agents and they had a tiny little yarn section and there was this yarn and it had sparkles in it and I was like I need it so, <laughs> so this is another DK it's from King Cole it's their Galaxy DK and the shade is 681 Mars. And the reason I added this in is because in the pattern it said for the DK weight, I, the way I read it, I would need three over three balls of that. But for whatever reason, I had three balls and I thought I might need a little bit more. So I thought in the um, this little garter six stitch section, I would just add the Galaxy DK. As it turned out, I didn't actually need it. I have nearly, the, I have the third ball completely left, except for maybe, maybe two meters in the bind off. Literally, I was like halfway in the bind off, so that was probably only a meter or so. Anyhow, that's fine. And I actually quite like that. And the shawl is just lovely. You know, I can wear, you can wear it like this. It's, it's a lovely, lovely size. It doesn't really need to be any bigger, I don't think. I do like a schlanket, but this, I don't know if lace shawls are really schlanket material for me anyhow. So, um, oh, I see a, an end I need to snip. They're all woven in, but I didn't snip that one. <laughs> Missed that one. So yeah, so I enjoyed knitting it. I, it's just paying attention to the pattern. Um, like I said, I'm not a big lace knitter. This is my first project that has this amount of lace in it. Um, I definitely made mistakes, but I don't think you can really see them anywhere. And that's fine with me. I was kind of halfway through it or a third of the way through it when I got very stressed out with things that were happening in life and it made it a little more challenging to knit. But in some ways, I had to concentrate when I was knitting it and pay attention to the pattern, so that helped. But then when, you know, I would start <laughs> worrying about something my mind wandered, then I would make a mistake, but it turned out okay. So, and my other finished object is another ranunculus. Oh, ouch. I keep catching my ranunculus on the, the part of his 
Velcro, and which is such a bad idea, especially I think because this is a merino and silk mix. So yeah, anyways, I just had a little curse. <laughs> Foul language was used. Anyway, so this is a ranunculus. The yarn is from Wild Atlantic Yarns, so, and she dies up in County Donegal. And this is on her knee floor ply base, which is the merino and silk. And the colorway is Dancing in the Fairy Glade, which I love that. So it's fingering weight, 400 meters to 100 grams. And she always puts a little quote of Irish writing on there. And this one is Yeats. I probably, uh, so. Fairies come take me out of this dull world, for I would ride with you upon the wind, run on the top of the disheveled tide, and dance upon the mountains like a flame. So that's Yeats, W.B. Yeats. Yes, so that was, it's just really beautiful and I love it. And I don't have on, they're not necessarily low rise, but they're not high waisted. They're just sort of like used to be just regular waisted jeans. I don't know. Anyhow, so I'll just stand up there and I have a little top under it and I can raise up and it doesn't go too so here's the top of my jeans so they're just right at the belly button there and um yeah i have a little bit left because i i could have gone a bit farther but what i'm doing now with the ranunculus and i'm gonna do sheppy you're making me fall off yep what is that good boy <sighs> sorry we just had a little issue with me him pushing me off the sofa yeah not on purpose um I forgot what I was saying it's been yeah I apologize for this podcast it really is all over the show but I just am trying to get it out because it's been so long and I have a lot to share anyhow so this ranunculus I have modified the pattern a little bit I've actually made several ranunculus now because I'm experimenting I'm a new enough sweater knitter I'm trying to, because I like the pattern, I understand it, so I feel like I can experiment a little bit and understand what it is like in different yarn types. Like holding it double with mohair. I, on one time I need to change the needle size, so I'm just learning. So this one is my most recent one, and I've made the length from the underarm. In pattern, it's about 18 centimeters, and I've made mine about 23. And I really like that, really? so I'm happy with it. It's lovely and soft. Um, so I'm gonna do an update with all my different ranunculuses, because I've actually, I'll quickly show you. I'm gonna do a separate video, because someone was asking me as well, why are people repeating the ranunculus? And one reason is for me, for my size so and I'm height. I'm just under 5'3". Uh, about a 38 inch bust, 23 centimeters in length from the underarm seems to suit me really well. My size and the length that I like and with the short sleeve, I can get a ranunculus, I can get a ranunculus out of one skein of yarn. And I have several beautiful single skeins of yarn. I would like to use, I mean, there's only, I have so many shawls, I think that I can have it, particularly summer shawls. So like one skein shawls. But, and I have very few, I actually have very few clothes. I have very few summer clothes. So I've knitted a couple other binoculars. This one is out of Gideon Yarns. The Ruby Slippers Mohair held double with the Br Grim Hilda. I think I was showing that on my last podcast. I was working on it. And so I made a few different sort of modifications with that that I'll talk about on the video. And then this one is a felt fusion yarn, just a single skein of superwash merino that I really liked. And I thought, oh, that's so lovely with a yellow tank underneath, especially, or like a red, or just with, I'd have like a um, dark blue kind of tanky looking bra It's probably like a bralette, I suppose. And that's really nice under it as well. And it allows to, the cool air to come in, but it's not, it's not really see-through, but that's partially the way my gauge is. So I'll talk about that um, more on the next, on the ranunculus specific video. 
Okay, friends, I actually had to stop for a little while because I, not my phone, but I completely overheated. So um, I was just showing you my uh, recently knitted ranunculi. <laughs> and now I will just show you a few other things that I have finished over the past several weeks. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, darling. Oh, yes, you do good boy. So I think in the last podcast, I was probably working on this a little bit. This is a lovely shawl. Again, it's um, not again, but it's not it's not a pattern. It's just something that, you know, I kind of cobbled together. It's all from uh, Studio Donegal Yarns. So that's all spun up in County Donegal in Kilcar, which is a lovely little village. And the woolen mill up there is just, it's such a boon to the area. And Studio Donegal, you can go in their little shop and they do the weaving upstairs and they have the yarn and they have their woven products and it's really lovely. And last year for my birthday, it was right after lockdown finished and opened up for a while till we locked down again, I went up with two of my friends from Irish Fiber Crafters and I got some of their yarns. Sorry, I've said it's all Studio Donegal yarn. It's not all. This art yarn is spun by Sandra of Meet the Wool. And this is from her very own sheep. So she's um, hand processed it, hand dyed it, and hand spun it. And you can find her art yarns up at Irish Fiber Crafters. And of course, they're online as well. And you know what I meant to say? I'm going to show you a few different things from Irish dyers here. And what I have found sending out prizes and all to different countries is that the shipping cost from Ireland to other countries seems to be a lot more affordable than, say, for the U.S. or Canada to send here. And we're also a lot quicker. So if you are interested in getting some of the Irish yarns at Irish Fiber Crafters or at the different, you know, indie dyers as well that I'm going to mention um, do check out their websites or their Etsy shops because you may be pleasantly surprised that you know the cost is not that much for shipping not as much as maybe you thought and um, yeah so that's another thing so anyways so I made this shawl so these this purple and the and the magenta are Donegal yarns studio Donegal yarns that's kind of the back and the orange is Sandra's hand spun. Oh, and he's sticking to me again. I won't swear. Yeah, look, say hi to the people. Say hi to the people. Yeah, he just wants to say hi to me. I've made this sort of into, I don't know what shape you call this, sort of an all elongated triangle. And it's a lovely rustic but squishy wool because it's, it's woolen spun, I'm sure. And I just mainly did it all in garter stitch really because the the color and the art yarn is the does all the interesting things and uh, can, I, can I put it on to show the people can I let's take a little break here for doggy snuggle lay down here <laughs> I just put this on to show people show the people what it might look like oh now your nail is caught in it oh my goodness so yeah, so, you know, you can just, you can have it just over your shoulders. <laughs> you can wrap yourself up nice and cozy in it. Um, yeah, so it's it's really nice. And I find this is perfectly fine next to my neck skin. Um, I'm not sensitive, though, I think. Um, but it is more a more rustic wool, but I find it perfectly fine. So, again, for something like this, um, a rustic wool, you're best to feel it for yourself. I mean, it would certainly be fine, you know, over top another layer of clothing, but you'd have to judge for yourself whether you like this, like that or not. And I've made a couple different shawls and things in the time that I didn't podcast that I have uh, sent up to Irish Fiber Crafters for sale, and I don't have them to show to you. I think I did too, but I'll try to go up at some point and take some photos to show you because one was made out of that lovely Afghan cashmere um, and yeah so it was kind of nice it was all nice neutral colors which 
um, I can appreciate, but I, I can tell you as someone that really loves brights and autumnals, I got quite bored after a while knitting in those colors. And um, yeah, I don't know how often I'll be doing that. Anyhow, so there's that shawl. And next I want to show you something that is so dear to my heart. Yeah, it just, a, a couple different things that really warm my heart. This is a project here, a shawl that I knit. I'll go into it in the life segment, but it was a very stressful time uh, for a lot of reasons. But within that time, I had done some yarn swaps with some fiber friends and podcasters and with really special yarns and they arrived. And I made this shawl. Sophie of Berka Creations Podcast and she's over in Transylvania and she's starting her homestead. I mean, she's, they've moved into their homestead. I know a while back she was saying they didn't even have their electricity at, at one point. So I know they're just flat out busy. So she hasn't podcast for a while, but I imagine sort of like us here after the growing season settles a bit and they finish doing the last touches on their house, she'll probably start podcasting again. But she sent me, we did a swap, I sent her some Irish fiber, Irish yarns, and she sent me some of her local sheep, which is the Berka sheep, is, is local to her, that's why she's called her podcast Berka Creations. And this here is the wool. This one she dyed, she dyed them both with onion skins, and they're just so lovely, and they are rustic, but again, I, it's fine for me. And I held it double with another uh, swapped yarn that I got from Alexandra of November Woods Fiber Company slash November Woods Crafting Podcast. And it's her um, mohair in the colorway Queen of Bees. And it was the first batch of mohair that she dyed up and we did a swap and I asked for that colorway. I just asked for the one skein of that because it's just so special. And I've held it double. Now this is, and I held, um, the yarn from Zofi double as well so it was kind of a an Aran weight and I knew that adding the lace weight mohair would mean it wasn't as prominent but you can see it there it's that it's all sorts of little shades of yellow and it just gave an extra interest to this and just wove it all together and I loved it so much and I paired it with this is my um this is the um, Donegal Woolen Mills, their undyed, it was undyed, I dyed it myself, their, their air and weight, and I dyed it with this spring with daffodils and dandelions from my garden, so that's naturally dyed. And I just, I don't know, this, this shawl brought me so much joy of just, you know, the contact with the fiber friends, and I got a lovely um, set of stitch markers. Oh, Alexandra sent some stitch markers. Oh, and so did Sophie, and she's making these little, I didn't bring it out, but you'll see it on projects as time goes by. She's making these resin stitch markers, progress keepers, that have little flowers from her garden in there. Oh, they're so lovely, and she sent me a yellow one and a green one, and it's so pretty. And Alexandra has some stitch markers as well that she'd made from beads and beads that I think her mother had. And I got some of those and it was really lovely. But also Time Weaver, who again, oh, fiber, has a podcast here on YouTube as well, which is, it's in, it's in English. There's an English one and a Spanish one, but the name of it, Isol del Punto or something like that. I think it means the sun in knitting. But um, Time Weaver, Time, like the plant, T-H-Y-M-E, Weaver, look her up. But she also makes stitch markers. And she sent me some as a present. She sent me some to give away. And then I also, I ordered, I asked her, could she make, custom make me some as well? And they arrived on my birthday, which my birthday, all the weeks after my birthday, I was not well, so I was stuck in bed. So it was really nice to get all these things around that time, which was really special. And I have, I'll just show you a couple. I have some of them I have in use, and I don't have the ones to show you for the giveaway right now, but I'll show them to you later because in the, probably the next podcast we'll talk about a giveaway. So this is jade and watermelon tourmaline. 
and I told her, you know, what I wanted and what kind of color rings. There we go. That's probably showing up better. And then also these ones she had made already. And I ordered these off her because I just love these. It's Amazonite and lemon lime crystals. There we go. Isn't that lovely? That's such, they're, they're so cheerful. Such a happy color. And I love tourmalines and I love watermelon tourmalines. Anyhow, so these, these arrived. And then also, again, I did a swap with Irish Fibers with um, Carrie of my wool mitten. So again, she has a podcast as well. She farms up in the Mitten Peninsula of Michigan in the U.S. And um, she sent me so many lovely things. And again, I will probably, sh you'll see them show up when I'm spinning because it was fiber from her own very special Coradell sheep because she, she breeds them, has been breeding them specifically for spinning. So the, the, the emphasis is on the fiber quality and she coats them as well. So, oh my goodness. So she just sent me little samples because I said, oh my goodness, I've never spun a coated fleece before because that's just not a thing that happens in Ireland. And um, so she very kindly sent me some samples and she sent me, I had admired this that she made in the winter. I was like, oh my goodness, that's so lovely. And she was so kind. She was like, I can gift you the pattern or there's also a free pattern as well that's very like that. And I was like, oh, and I looked at the free pattern. I said, that's fantastic. I'll get this free pattern. You don't have to give me the pattern. I'm happy with the free pattern. I think this one is a Stephen West one. And when I opened the package, this was in it. And she said, this is for me and or or for Tom or and and I just I was like, we will both use this. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? Like, even though it was so warm, I kept these things beside the bed when I wasn't feeling well because they just meant the world to me. Yes. And this guy was beside the bed as well because he means the world to me. He always is beside the bed. So that was the segue into some wonderful, wonderful things. Also, she said, uh, one of the other things she said, and she sent me this yarn. So this is um, about 240 yards. It's mill spun Corydale with sparkle because she knows I love some sparkle. It's a sport weight. And look at that. So look at that. So I have some plans with that. Uh, I've totally segued into something I didn't mean to. But first, let me just show you. I didn't finish talking about the shawl, the Let's Be Friends shawl. So again, it's just all garter stitch. I love me some soft squishy garter stitch with a bit of stockinette in there to just give it a little... It's not letting me podcast. I love you. I love you. <laughs> and it's just, you know, sort of... A, because... I didn't have a huge amount of all the fiber, so it's just sort of long and thin. And again, you can have it like this. I made this into a nice open lacy bit where I just kind of did, you know, like, um, I don't even remember what I did. What, do you, what is that? Like yarn over knit two together. Yeah. And it's just so, so. The works in progress. One work in progress. Um, one work in progress. I'm getting ready to cast on another for a knit along, so I'll tell you about that in a second. And now, I sh but I'll show you my actual work in progress at the moment, and you're going to laugh, or you're going to go, oh no. But it is another ranunculus, and <laughs> there's, a, there's a method to my madness, which I will talk about in the ranunculus-specific video. But I have it in my lovely bag, from Amelia X Joy, Amelia Joy, and she's a seller on Etsy, and she has very affordable bags, and she's over in the UK, so um, it costs a little bit more to have that sent, you know, to us in the EU now, but um, she often has little sales, and she was having a little sale, but they're really, really reasonable bags. I mean, they're not fancy, but they're well made. And I love the fact that they all have, well, you can't see in there, but they all have a pocket. So they all have a pocket. Even this is, I think, called the regular size. So it's sort of her smallest. But it's just a great little bag. 
if you're making a binoculars or socks or a small enough shawl. Yeah, so this is a lovely one with owls on it. And in it is another ranunculus where I have got a lovely skein of yarn from Curious Stitches and that's Ellie and she's no longer dying but she has started back her podcast. It's on a new channel and she's di um, designing again and she's got a couple new patterns out. One is the Crescent Moon Shawl uh, that I've ordered uh, that I uh, bought from her and it has a little bit of beadwork and a little you know tiny little bit of like cabling which I've not not done either of those so I'm looking forward to trying that when my headspace is good but that was her tag there and this is her colorway called talisman and it's silver sparkly fingering so it's 400 meters to 100 grams superwash merino 15% nylon 10% stellina and I'm holding that together double with and I finally found a source for drops, um, fibers, yarns here in Ireland. And I got that from Winnie's Wool Wagon, I think it is. And they have an online shop as well as a little shop, I think, somewhere outside of Dublin. But so I've got this drop cell pack. And now that's looking, it's looking more blue. It's teal green. My phone, oh my what am I going to do? I want you to cuddle with me and you want me to cuddle, but we, I don't know how that keeps turning around. But my phone always, it doesn't it get the coloring right. That's pretty close, although it's a bit lighter. But anyhow, um, this is, so I got two balls of this for my ranunculus. And it is mohair and silk, 7525, I think it is. And the color is, the color is color 24. Um, but what I think I might do is I'm going to knit this up and then I'm going to think about, first off, I, I was just trying to see what the drops up, or not alpaca, the drops mohair and silk is like because I've never used it. And, and it's perfectly fine. You know, it's a really good price point And if I'm wanting it to hold double with things, it makes it so much more affordable. I can definitely tell the difference between, you know, this budget, you know, big commercial mohair and silk. I can tell the difference between that and like the mohair and silk that I held with Gideon yarns. I mean, they're both meant to be kid mohairs, but the Gideon yarns one is, is definitely softer. It's not like this isn't soft, but that is definitely softer. But it's more of an investment. So if you're, you know, just wanting a solid color to hold double with something, um, yeah, I'd probably try to get some drops more often than not to hold with my special indie yarns in that way. So that's knitting up really nicely together. And um, I have a lovely little stitch marker on here. And I'm pretty sure I got this one from Fairy Realm Yarns. Again, she's a, she's a, an, uh, indie dyer on Etsy and I'm just on the yoke here you can kind of see how it's working up don't know if the sparkle is really showing up on the camera but um, yeah so that's what I'm working on at the minute and what I'm about to cast on for September 1st is the frivolous and frugal podcast is having a knit along it a Stephen West knit along so any Stephen West pattern yes. so I'm getting ready to cast on the curvette shawl by Stephen West and I have got so I got enabled by Ruth of Ruth loves to knit and um, it's probably only fair because I enabled her with the Irish Cushendale mill spun yarn Cushendale woolen mills yarn their Irish yarn out of the Galway sheep breed so I enabled her for that and she enabled me for, to get this beautiful bag from Soft, Ac Soft Accents and they sell on Etsy and it's this beautiful African fabric and it has a name and it's forgot I've forgotten it so I really apologize but this is a fantastic large bag um, this maker is does wonderful work she's got She's 
two pockets in here and just loads fits and in there. And she's on Instagram. And I think she's Soft Accents UK on Instagram, I thought. So her name is Jackie. I thought I had her information, I believe. Anyway. So I thought I had her card card, but I guess I don't. But again, I'll put the information in the down bar. And the yarn that I am going to use for my curvette shawl is from an Irish indie dyer. And she has her own website as well as she's on Etsy. And she's on Instagram. <coughs> and her name is Mariana and she's Fine Leaf Fibers. And I ordered, she had this lovely shawl set. And I've already wound up the first ball. And it's a fade. So, here we go. So this is what I'll start with. And you may remember me showing this on the other podcast. And I'm going to pair that with where there's a section throughout. There's little areas where Stephen has you doing a mohair um, section. But I am i couldn't find any mohair at that point because I couldn't find any drops alpaca. And I, I needed to see it in person to match the color anyway. But at the Crafty Stitchers and Knitwits, they had this lace weight from Juniper Moon. And if you can see there, I was trying to... Shippy, bump me. Isn't that interesting? That one smell good? That smell good? I was trying to match that blue and... I was I lucked out and I've done that and I'll put a little picture of the curvette shawl so that cast on is the first of September and um, so I put the name of the knit, that knit along here there's also some other knit alongs I wanted to mention that are for shawls too so um, it's knits and pieces so that's another podcast and they're based in the US Yes, because one, I believe, is in Kentucky and the other is in Alaska. And they're having the Fall for Shawls Mal. So that's a make-along, so you can crochet and all as well. Okay, so the dates for both of those knit-alongs are the 1st of September to the 31st of October. So there's that one. Then um, Michael at Peace for Peace Crafting Podcast, he's also doing a cow. And again, I'll put that on the screen because because I just wasn't feeling well. I didn't take good notes when I was watching some of the podcasts. And a lot of the podcasts, I didn't make notes. And there were a lot of things I wanted to tell you, but sorry. Um, so he has a make-along, which basically is like taking those, the, the patterns you bought a while ago, the yarns you bought a long while ago, the projects you meant to do, and going ahead and doing them, you know, ones from pre-2021. And the name of that is, I'll put it right here. <laughs> and also, Karen from Stitches and Jacks is doing a, a make-along very similar. And hers is, you know, you can do any kind of craft. And it's called Finishing Kits and Whips, I think something like that so I'll put that full name there and she's running that as well and hers is running to the end of the year uh, piece for piece is running I think to the end of October but again I'll put that on the screen or and and the drop down bar um, yeah so that was just a few of the little knit alongs I remembered to write down to mention they have to do with shawls and of course Ongoing again, I believe to the end of October as well, is the um, Across the Pond Shawl um, Make Along from uh, Ruth Loves to Knit and Fernanda of Little Monkeys and Me. And then Amy Palco of The Meaningful Stitch is also doing the All the Shawls Cal as well. And I think that might be to the end of the year. But, so yes, yeah, so I'm going to cast this on very soon. I'm really excited about that. And I also have waiting to be cast on is my circle cardigan from um, Albina, Albina McLaughlin. And that's a really unique construction. And I've tried the cast on. You start with a circular cast on. And I really kind of struggled with that because like my needles are working against me so I'm, I'm waiting trying. for uh, the right size of needles to come along in metal. I have. I'm doing a DK weight out of um, Fairy Realm yarns and Arctic Crafts yarns. That's what I meant to say as well. So Benta of Arctic Crafts 
is starting September 1st running a spooky make along. And it's basically, you know, anything that, you know, the yarn, the pattern, the design is Halloween-y. And so she's running that as well. Ask her, can I have that in the spooky mail? Because it's it's all purples. And I'm calling the cardigan, even before I thought of this, you know, heard about the spooky mail, I'm calling it the Arctic Fairy Circle because of the two dies and the name is the circle cardigan and of course the fairy circle is a very very magical place and of course my Stephen West shawl think of bonfires and pumpkins of it of my great pumpkin shawl if you know Charlie Brown and Snoopy if you ever ow, ow, got to watch it's the great pumpkin Charlie Brown so that's what that shawl is going to remind me another I forgot to show you this bit so in a swap, so this is this is more of an acquisition section. Um, some of it is from swapping and some of it is things that I've bought um, that I want to show you. But if that's not your thing, I totally understand for sure. Um, so you can skip over this with the timestamp. If you're interested in hearing the life stuff, you can go to that. Or if that's, you know, the knitting is all that you're interested in. Thank you so much for coming and I hope to see you again. Okay, so these two yarns came in a swap. And I'd mentioned some of my other swap yarns there. But these are from Alexandra at November Woods Fiber Company. And she has her podcast, November Woods Podcast. And this is her... Now, so she has this on the birch base. This base is... She's changed it. So the birch base isn't around anymore. But she has something comparable. And so it's uh, a fingering weight, so 100 or 430 yards in 100 grams. And the color weight is Lilac Grove and she natural dyes. So this is, isn't that lovely? Now, she sent one for me and one for you. So we will be doing another giveaway soon. I've just got to organize myself. I, I see that we're actually creeping up to nearly 2,000 subscribers. So maybe we'll do, well, let's do a giveaway for that. So yeah, so that'll be great. So when we reach 2,000 subscribers, I will do a podcast and, and set up the way to, to enter the giveaway. So having said that, again, I'll just say, if you are a maker, a thing, you know, crafty and fibery, uh, and you would like to donate a prize to the giveaway, please do get in touch. Um, the email is wildcottagepodcast at gmail.com and I'll put that in the drop down box as well. Yeah, and let us know if you'd like to donate something. That would be fantastic if you have a pattern or something like that. Um, but I have, so far, so I have November Woods uh, yarn. I have... Um, one or two other things that I bought myself and then I have those lovely stitch markers from Time Weaver which I don't for some reason I don't have right on me but anyway so so one of these is for me and what I've decided to do is just as a little bit of future plans I'm going to hold it double with this lovely lovely yarn from Felt Fusion and she's an indie dyer on Etsy and she has her own um, website as well and the colorway is mulberry and it's probably the most expensive yarn I ever bought it was um, 26 pounds so that was probably about 30 euros and I bought it for a pattern when um, I was newer to knitting and I didn't realize that at 533 meters to 100 grams meant it was very very thin and yeah and, and now I'm just like, there's no way I want to knit that up by itself. But holding it double with this, that's right down my alley. So that's going to be probably a lovely shawl at some point. But also, Alexandra also sent this lovely bunch of Cascade. And I love Cascade. That's my probably my most favorite commercial yarn. Um, so we've got 200, I think it's 250 grams of Peruvian Highland wool and it's not super washed so I'm super excited and what I think I might do is I'll go up to Irish Fiber Crafters and see what art yarns Sandra has spun there that will look nice with this I'm gonna make probably a nice big chunky shawl or a cow 
and that will be fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to that. So that was an acquisition as well. Now, so the two Irish dyers I want to show you, and I actually have a third dyer that I want to talk about as well. But the first one is Finally Fibres again. And um, she dies down in County Cork. And like I said, she has her own website. She's also on Etsy. And she has this beautiful color called Peony. And I really enjoyed that. But I wanted to, I wanted to make one of the assigned pooling shawls where you where the color is very where it pools or you know there's the splotches of it you do a different type of stitch and uh, there's certain there's specific patterns for it and i think via chasing rabbits fiber company um they're u.s based but i think that the either the designer is also the dyer there or they work with the designer. So if you search for assigned pooling patterns, you'll find them on Ravelry. And I would gotten one of the shawl patterns, uh, but I didn't want to order yarn from the US. So I talked with Katrina, I think is her name. I said it early and I've forgotten and I'm sorry. And I was messaging her and I said, can you make that peony color can you dye it up as a special order for me in a way that it'll be assigned pooling because you only want certain, I mean, it's sort of like a quarter of the skein to have the splash of color. So she was happy to do that and she had choices of bases and then of course I went for a sparkly DK. So that's it there. So that's gonna be a future plan for me there, but it's also an acquisition and she has beautiful yarns and beautiful colors. And again, the great pumpkin shawl that I'm going to be doing is out of her some of her colorways. And, um, you know, I, I think for sort of indie dyers in Ireland that you people internationally might know, it might be like uh, Life on the Long Grass and Hedgehog Fibers. And actually, I've never had any of those yarns. Um, they're that bit more expensive, which is probably why I haven't gone for them. Um, so these ones are like, they're not as expensive. They're not quite as expensive, these other yarns. So I was treated myself to that. And then I also came across about a month or, well, no, it was probably about two months ago now by Instagram, another Irish dyer that I hadn't heard about whose colors just, oh my goodness, the colors are so beautiful and vibrant and wonderful. And I just kept looking and looking and looking and going, oh, I'd really like some. Because also I want to try yarns from all the Irish dyers if possible. I mean, you know, the island is not that huge. So I, it's not like that's trying to, it's not like coming into the hundreds of dyers. So it's something that's doable over time, I think. but. So I really wanted to try her yarns and I was looking and I could not decide. I could not pick because I was just like, oh, with, I was so excited over all of them because they were just that bit different. They were even, they were just so bright and the combinations were so cheerful. I couldn't, I couldn't decide. And yes, yeah, so I've had a rough six weeks um, just personally, but also with family and being very worried and about Shep and, and so I did some emotional buying and I said, I'm going to treat myself to this and wait till you see what it is. Okay. So there's crinkling and I apologize because I'm not taking them out of plastic because actually what I'm doing is I just have them set up near the bed. Like, so like actually, so near the bed, I have the Let's Be Friends shawl and the lovely cow that Carrie sent because I'm looking at them when, you know, I just need a boost. And I also have these set up by the bed, so I'm just looking at them because I feel like they're art. So she had a mini skein set. So it's out of high twist merino. It's 100% merino, but it's very high twist. Um... So if you wanted to try making a sock with merino without nylon, that would be your best bet. I probably wouldn't make a sock out of merino um, just because it's soft, but 
I'm not going to make socks out of these. So anyways, so it's a set of 30 mini skeins. And I'll tell you the price. At the moment, the price was 145 euros. And shipping was free. And it came in a box. And it was wrapped up this lovely. Um, so anyway. So this is the first set of 10. And isn't that beautiful? These, and I'm sorry about the glare. Here we go. This part from here really reminds me of like Christmas in a way and sort of a pinky Christmas of like candy canes and stuff. So these ones I, yeah, I really love. And I can see myself making some things out of that probably at some point. Then we have this beautiful set. Look at this. Look at that. Oh my goodness. So wouldn't that be a lovely small shawl or all or all together like yeah. I just don't know what I'll do with it yet. But I'm just looking at the, the minute. At the minute I'm just looking at them and going just kind of breathing them in. And then the third pack, which is probably the one that I don't know if I ever want to knit it up. I just want to frame it. <laughs> Because it makes me so happy. Look. Oh my goodness. That is just. It's so beautiful. The colors are nearly true. But again like the blue. The bl this blue is a bit more green. It's more of a turquoise green. Rather than a turquoise blue. But it is just so so beautiful and it makes my heart so happy to look at that and they're all her colorways so you know that's it's like sometimes you get mini sets and they're special for the mini set but these a lot of these are just colorways that you can get in the larger skeins as well and she has other colors obviously not just these but i didn't tell you I didn't say the name. So it's Vera, Vera Yarns Design. And I have, sorry about that, Quinklin. I have her, and she sent a sticker and little labels like you can sew into your garment after you've made. But she also does embroidery thread, hand dyed embroidery thread. Isn't that cool? So there, let's see, Vera Yarn Design, and she's on Instagram. She might be on Facebook as well. I'm not on Facebook, so I don't know. But like the embroidery yarn is 55% Blue Face Lester Superwash and 45% Silk. So isn't that cool? She sent that in as a little sample. And then I have one other thing that I'd like to show you that I got. And it was part of Inspiring Yarns. So I talked about them last time. And they are like a social enterprise community enterprise up in Northern Ireland set up by um, independent or indie yarn diner, dyers, no mama, and um, which is E-W-E -E because there's so many different ways of saying you, E-W-E, -E, which a lot of times, a lot of people know it as the you as in the ram and the you, but around Ireland particularly, that's how I know it anyways, is there's a lot of different ways of pronouncing that word. When my exes used to say yo, so the yo. So that's, so she's Yo Mama. And then Giddy Art Enterprise is Inspiring Yarns. And they have different dyers um, throughout the UK and Ireland dyeing special colorways for them that they then sell and, you know, with the profits help fund their enterprise. And so one of the first ones that they put up was from Mad Scientist Yarns. And this is the stellar colorway on the four ply of Superwash Merino, Nylon, and Lurex. Oh my goodness! So it's, and I'm afraid the colors are all blowing out a little bit because I'm indoors and the camera doesn't know how to act. But isn't that great? And I think another th that I might do, again, I was thinking that this might be something to enter into the spooky mouth 
is I'm going to pair it with some of the drops merino and silk and I'm going to probably order a bit more because I think I'd like to make this into a I'm going to make it into a ranunculus um, because that pattern is easy for me and I'm just enjoying exploring it with different yarns um, so I'm going to hold this double but I'm thinking I'd also like to try this time your long sleeves and just some just the the long sleeves and what is this mohair just mohair long sleeves so that might be one of my next sort of projects so I hope you enjoyed that just have the little bit of life update for people that are interested so poor Shep here uh, had it I'm not going to go into it because it was very upsetting not quite as upsetting for, for him but it was super upsetting for Tom and I so he had a very traumatic injury to his tail very traumatic I don't think there's a lot of feeling in the tail because he didn't seem to be too bothered by it but it was very it was quite serious and it ended up that he needed to have basically all of his tail taken off so yes so he's wearing this puffy um collar while we're right here with him uh when we're not here like if we step out of the room and definitely at night he has this giant one of those big giant cones and so he's on, you know, different painkillers and all. Um, but yeah, so he had to have his tail, basically it's docked and it's all shaved there and it has a lot of um, stitches. So it's healing up really well. Uh, he does have, um, so he had probably, he had hip dysplasia. And two years ago, he had to have his, one of his, couldn't really replace it because anyway, so they did a ball and socket. So he has arthritis in them. And so, yeah, so that's always sort of a bit of an issue for him. But he's, we've got him on it. Also, a new painkiller. So he seems much better. And he's obviously got the painkiller for his um, surgery. While he was under for the surgery, we went ahead and had his teeth cleaned. So he didn't have any dental problems. They were just, they just needed clean because there was plaque and tartar. So he got, <laughs> he got topped and tailed. I'm joking about it now, but for about a week, it was, yeah, it really was so upsetting. But he's doing well. We just have to keep a very good eye on him so he doesn't, you know, how dogs, when they have an injury like that, you know, they, they lick it too much and whatnot. And, you know, so that's why he has to have the big cone on. So he's doing okay, but it was like super upsetting. Um, yeah. And then uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you know, because I'd asked for anyone that, you know, they could send positive thoughts, prayers, good energy for my sister, for one of my youngest, well, I'm the oldest, so sort of my middle sister um, became seriously very unwell and had to be rushed to hospital. And she was in there for quite some time and it was very bad for a while. And so so kind people on Instagram you know sent lovely messages and I passed on message to her about all the people that were thinking of her and sending her good energy and saying prayers and she's home now which is great but that was you know about 10 days of intense worry so those were some of you know the stressful psychological things that have been going on in the past six weeks and of course at the same time you know our dad is still undergoing the cancer treatment happily he's doing he's doing well on it um and hopefully i'm hoping that i can go over now i have i have health appointments i have to go to but it looks like in october uh i will be clear to go to the u.s um because i'm a dual citizen of u.s and ireland Tom, my partner, on the other hand, is a dual citizen of U.S., not U.S., of Ireland and Canada. And so at present, he is unable to go. He would not be allowed in to the States on either of those countries, from either of those countries. But I'm allowed in as a, as a dual citizen. So we will see, um, because we very much want to go and spend several months with family um, time is very precious. We want to spend the holidays there together. So, and of course, we now we had the, the other thing happening with Shep. 
and so that's a whole other layer as well. Luckily we have a friend that lives on the wild cottage property with us um, but that friend is also going through a lot of stuff and having to care for someone so we have another friend that will come in if Tom and I are both gone and will come and stay in the house and take care of the dogs. So yeah so we're in the final sort of stages of arranging that as well. And then of course on top of all that um, <laughs> it was really hot in our so right around, uh, be, right before my birthday, we had a heat wave, which in Fahrenheit would mean like, you know, 81 degrees Fahrenheit. But for me with my fibromyalgia, I don't regulate heat well and I get heat exhaustion super easy. And that happened to me and it made me so sick for all those days. And then even the other day, again, it got to be like, you know, 76 and I got sick again. So well, I have, you know, with all my different sort of chronic health challenges, the past six weeks, six weeks have been tough. But, you know, it comes, it's, it, thankfully it tends to cycle. So I'm not too bad right now. I'm able to do this podcast. And, um, yeah, so I did a whole lot of knitting, <clears throat> all those ranunculuses and shawls and a few things you didn't see. There was some days where I just couldn't even knit, but for the most part, I was able to get my knitting done. So that was good. Um, so yeah, so we, that was mainly the life stuff. Tom has been taking care of all the things and, you know, harvesting the vegetables and watering things through the times when there's no rain. And our friend has been coming and, you know, helping with the garden and all that sort of stuff as well. So we're so thankful for those, for, oh, I'm getting hot now again. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it's 68 degrees in the house, and that's too hot for me. It's not the menopause. I'm past the menopause. I don't, <laughs> thankfully, knock wood, don't have hot flushes anymore. It's just my temperature regulation just does not work. Um, yeah, but, so, everything is, people are healing, you know, in my family. They're doing okay, and, you know, they're, navigating all the health challenges i am navigating mine and it's it's okay um so we appreciate all your good thoughts and thank you for that and yeah so that's just the little the little update because i know sometimes people are like i haven't seen you for a while are you okay and so um i just wanted to talk about that a little bit i don't like to mention it too much all the time but since there was such an absence and I had asked for some, you know, good thoughts and prayers, I thought I should probably let you know how it turned out. So, okay. Friends, I hope you're doing well. I know we are not unique in having all these challenges and a lot of people have even more challenges and yeah, different and worse. And my heart goes out to you and things will get better. i thinking of all of you, keeping you all and the whole world in our hearts, sending love and good thoughts as much as we can. And um, I hope the podcast has helped you take your mind off of any worries that you've had for a little while. And I hope you got to do some nice knitting or crocheting or whatever housework you might have been doing while you're watching or listening. So, take care, friends. With love from Paul Cottage.